understand who he is, the world changes, and we give him the praise in Jesus' name. So those of you that can stand, stand with me. We'll just give God praise in Jesus' name. I need the every
covering, his guidance, his keeping, every heart will be blessed. Jesus, eternal Father and our God. And in the morning, Lord Jesus, we come into your house, into your presence, Lord Jesus, giving you thanks and praise for one more day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are in your house, Lord Jesus. We are now we are but in the house of God to serve you, to worship you, Lord Jesus, to tell you, Lord, that we need you every hour, Lord Jesus. Every minute of the day, Lord, we need you. Lord God, we cannot do nothing without you, Lord Jesus. Without you, Lord Jesus, we are a failure. So, Heavenly Father, as we come this morning and put each and every one here before you this morning, we ask you, Lord, for your blessing. We say when the praises goes up, your blessing will come down. Bless each and every one this morning, Lord God. Lord Jesus, remember those that are sick, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus for your healing power because you're still in the business, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify your name. We worship you, Jesus. There is no God like you, and there is no one beside you. You are the true one. You are the living God. The God who cares and the God who understands. And Lord Jesus, we thank you. So Lord Jesus, we pray for a pastor who is not here today. God is on your business, Lord. He's on your business, and we ask you to guide him, strengthen him, and keep him safely, Lord, and bring him back home safe. Lord, remember the service this morning. I pray for the praise and worship this morning, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, as your praises goes up, your blessing will come down. We pray for the musician, Lord God. We pray for them, Lord God. We pray for the one who's going to break the bread of life. Lord Jesus, open up our hearts, Lord Jesus, that someone might hear the word today, Lord Jesus, and come to serve you before it's too late. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we glorify your name. Lord, we worship you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. And we worship you. And we just want to thank you for today, Lord. Lead on for us, dear God, and we leave everything into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. refrain that just keeps going round and round in my heart. I was like, Lord, you know, I'm just grateful. 
I'm grateful for who you are. I'm grateful for everything that you've done. I'm grateful for your grace, for your mercy. And this song, I know I pulled it out, but I thought, Lord, I don't know how many of the brethren are going to know it because it just feels like such an old song. But we're going to sing. And it says, <laughs> I'm forever grateful to you. And I'm forever grateful for the cross.
forever grateful for the cross. What has God done for us? You know, we've all got num different numbers in terms of our ages. But even when we look back to yesterday, what are we grateful for? When we think about what it cost for our Lord and Savior to shed his blood to show us how much he loved us, do we truly understand what that means and the impact on our lives? To be grateful, thankful, just to worship and honor the King of Kings. The verse says he didn't wait for us to be ready. He didn't wait for us to say, Lord, I need salvation. He didn't wait for us to say, I can't live without you. He was ahead of us. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're just going to sing that a couple more times in Jesus' name. We'll start from the verse. I really want us to understand just how much God has done for us. I want to take time to thank him and appreciate him for everything he's done for me. I could not be here without him. We would not be here without him. We could not stand without him. Hallelujah, Jesus. You did not wait for me to draw near to you, but you clothed yourself in frail humanity. He left heaven for us. You did not wait for me to cry out to you, but you let me hear your voice calling me. you for me you know it doesn't matter what the sound in the house sounds like it's a sound that comes from us that's where our worship lies hallelujah it says you Lord you are worthy and no one can worship you
you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, he is worthy. Hallelujah of all our praise. Jesus. Holy is your name, Jesus. You are worthy, oh God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. scripture reading this morning is taken from the gospel of Luke hallelujah from chapter 7 1 through 10 Luke chapter 7 hallelujah I'm going to try and read the he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people he entered into Capernaum and a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die and when he heard of Jesus he sent unto him the elders of the Jews beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant and when they came to Jesus they besought him instantly saying that he was worthy for whom that he was worthy for whom he should do this for he loveth our nation and he has built us a synagogue then jesus went with them and when he was now not far from the house the centurion sent friends to him saying unto him lord trouble not thyself for i am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof wherefore neither thought i myself worthy to come unto thee but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Praise to 10. For I am, I, sorry, for I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I pray, and I say unto them, unto one, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent return into the house, found the servant hold, hold that had been sick. Praise God. We thank God for his word, which we know is always blessed. Praise be to God. I just want to welcome in the house before I forget, not that I'm going to forget, we've got um, a brethren from Newport. I always want to say Cardiff, but from Newport. So we welcome into the house this morning, um, Elder and Minister Earl from Jesus, from the assembly in Newport. And I hadn't seen, we also have um, Brother George and Sister Marriott Bell at the back. We give God thanks, hallelujah, Jesus, for them to be in the house. Um, I'm not sure whether you guys are settled. George, we pray for you. We love you. Did you want to give a word? Are you comfortable where you are? Do you want to? Okay, you don't have to stand. I spent, I spent most of my life, actually most of my life in England. I spent in Ipswich. But I still kept my Dudley passport. Amen. It's good to be here. Thank you for praying for me. One of the things about praying, a lot of people pray for an individual and when they get better, they're surprised. 
And, I, and those people go, George. I said, did you pray for me? Yeah. Well, what do you expect? Oh, sorry. You know, so I'm so glad. You know, when I first went into hospital um, in March, February, March, 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 May, something like that, fifth anyway. And um, while I was there, the song that I had was 62 from the hymnal. If you can call up the first verse, the first verse, the first line of 62 from the hymnal, for those of us who know it, it's mine. God's abiding peace is in my soul today. I can feel it now. He has taken all my doubts and fears away. The last bit, even though it's written in English, I'm going to say it in Jamaican. I can't even tell you how. <laughs> it's taken all my doubts and my fears away. Amen. And after that experience, I'm seeing so many people in church and they're sick. How are you doing? Oh, poor old me. Poor old you. Listen, I'm not a poor old George. I want you to get that. I'm not a poor old George. So I won't walk in this place and you say, poor old George. God is good. God is good. So I want to see all of those sick folks in here. From today, it's not a poor old me. You've been healed. God bless you. Praise God. It is mine. Hallelujah, Jesus. The knowledge of God. And we thank you. We thank God for your testimony. All day, you know, it's about being grateful to our God, acknowledging who he is, lifting him up because he is worthy, because he is God, because he is king. And because I'm in this place, I'm going to ask Minister Earl to come and greet the church and we'll call Elder Earl later. I'm just hoping I've got the offices right so I don't get into trouble later. Blessings, everyone. Blessings. We're here in the presence of God. So I give him all the honor, all the praise that's due unto him. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. Giving thanks for Mother at the back there. Mrs. Mary Billinghurst. Amen. And for Minister Clovet, Minister Christine, and Bishop in his absence. So I'm just going to share. See, I came prepared, okay? Amen. So we do a prison ministry, and we go to Cardiff Prison, which is a Category C prison. So there are some, um, I wouldn't say ripe nuts, more acorns in there. Amen. And what they did was wrote a book of poetry, and in their own words, what it feels like to be incarcerated. And the reason why I'd like to share it with you today is, number one, because sometimes we imprison ourselves by the way how we do things, say things, feel things, think things, and don't trust our Father. And the other thing is, is that God is allowing us to go into these ministries to share his word. And I got a little chorus afterwards, so I'm not going to be here too long. I'll just read this. Oh, sorry. Greetings to my husband as well. <laughs> the friend I didn't need. At night when there is not a sound, I turn my desperate thoughts around. I think of times when life is free, and I was still the real me. I lost myself but didn't show the loneliness I'd get to know. The very thing I did despise became my friend, but in disguise. It very slowly stripped away my strength, my soul, my laugh, my smile, then left me broke and in denial. I can't believe it changed my ways, and it took me to my darkest days. At night, I try to dream away my guilt, my shame, my anger. But even that got hard to do. My days and nights turned into one. Who knows what damage I have done? 
This is my final chance to mend the pain I've caused and ditch that friend, because sometimes friends are bad news. But I have a friend, a precious friend, and he sends me out into his vineyard with the rest of New Dimensions Faith Fellowship in Newport. I had to get that one in. So I'm just going to sing this chorus to the regions beyond. I'm sure most of you know it. To the regions beyond, I must go, I must go. to do the same in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, hallelujah. Okay, so now I've got two songs to sing for the offering other than the one I planned. But God is good. Is God good? You know, I, I'm just drawn by what Minister um, Earl said, that concept of freedom in Christ. I think sometimes we look at people in prison and we just go, it serves them right. But sometimes, as she said, we imprison ourselves and that's what sin did to us. Sin had us bound. Sin had us held. We didn't have the freedom, but because of the blood of Jesus, because he died on the cross, we have liberty in Jesus' name. We're going to stand now, and I'm just going to pray for our morning's offering. If we can ask our ushers to be prepared in Jesus' name. Father, we love and adore you. We praise you. We humbly bow before you, O oh God, my Father. Lord, it's a time of giving, O oh Lord Jesus. I pray your blessing upon it, upon the offering, upon the hearts of everybody in this place, O oh God. Because we know that you are more than able. And we trust you and hold on to you in all things. Have your way, we pray, in Jesus' name. abiding peace is in my soul today. Yes, I feel it now. Yes, I feel it now. He has taken all
sing it if you can in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As I give God thanks for so many things, as I'm grateful for so many things, I just want to honor and give God thanks for the three souls that went bound down in baptism yesterday in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. And I know Minister Elder Earl will not be prepared for this, but could you just come and greet our new ba- candidates? They're not candidates anymore. Our new brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus. Praise God. When, when we, we reach, reach the, the city, city in, in the sky, sky. sorrows will be over. people in here. This roof should be coming off. Let's try again. God is good. All the time. time. One more time. God is good. All the time. Praise the Lord. First let me greet Pastor Christine, Bishop Nathan in his absence, Mother um, Simmons in her absence. Praise the Lord. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. It is good to travel nearly 300 miles and to hear good news. Souls turning from unrighteousness to righteousness. Praise the Lord. With all that's going on in the world today, Jesus is still saving souls. I want to welcome these candidates in the mighty name of Jesus. You have made the best decision of your life. Praise the Lord. But I'll say this. The song says, nobody told me That the what? The road would be easy. But you know what? I don't believe he brought us this far to leave you. Praise the Lord. Jesus will not leave you. He won't forsake you. There will be some dark roads. There will be some lonely moments. But you know, when we're all gone, Jesus is always with you. So be encouraged, be empowered, and continue. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Isn't God good? Okay, I'm hot, so I'm hoping you're hot too. But you know what? God's word is faithful, he's true, and I just love how he connects all the dots in our lives. He doesn't leave anything by chance. He prepares us even when it doesn't feel like it. So we're going to go into the word of God. We're going to prepare our hearts, our minds to receive his word. And know that he still loves us, come what may. And I know every time I say this, I get this wrong. I'm going to try once to get it right. So this morning, by the grace of God, I introduce to some and I present to others, Minister Clement Angus, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation. 
salvation so salvation this morning. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ our Lord climbed that hill for us? Aren't you glad that he suffered for you and me this morning? Aren't you glad that he took those whips for you and me? Aren't you glad that he spread his arms upon a tree and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do you know that's why we're here today that is why we're here to give him praise and give him glory hallelujah i can never take it for granted of god's goodness i can never take it for granted that i was going one direction and he turned me around and set me on another path I can never take it for granted that I was sinking deep in sin. And he took his arm, rolled up his sleeves, went into the mud and the pit and the miry clay where I was and brought me out. Hallelujah. I can never take it for granted. Hallelujah. That I had desires out there that were not desirable. But Jesus Christ changed my heart. He changed my desires. He changed my thoughts. He changed my emotions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. I just want to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. You all look so good this morning. <laughs> you know, and it's such a privilege to have our brothers and sisters from, from far. You know, Brother George and, uh, and, and Sister Marriott. Oh, glory to God, our, our Minister Earl and uh, our Elder Earl, we just thank God for you. You know, when we stood up, we stood up because of the goodness of God. You know, this man has a testimony. He has a testimony. And testimonies change lives. Testimonies turn people's perspectives around. He was on death's door. We're going to talk about that today. He was on, on death's door. Now he's come through this door. <laughs> huh? He's come through this door to tell us about God's goodness. We have a right to stand up. We have a right to give him thanks. We have a right to clap our hands. We have a right to raise our hands because God is still in the healing business. Hallelujah. We thank God for you in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we just want to glorify you this morning. We want to thank you for your goodness and your mercies and your grace, for everything that's been done, everything that's been said. Lord God, speak a word this morning, Lord. Oh God, thy servant here, speak to me first, Lord. Deal with me first, Lord God. Oh God, I minister to your people this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My topic for you this morning is dear to me, but sick and ready to die. Dear to me, but sick and ready to die. There are many things in our life that we hold dear. Our marriages, our families, our jobs, our homes, our physical and our mental health. 
our goals and our ambitions and our, even our hobbies. But I would like to think this morning that our priority is our relationship with God. And I would like to think that our ultimate affection is for God. In verse 2 of our scripture, this centurion had what was dear to him wasn't himself, but what was dear to him was his servants. And this is one of the many surprising things about our text. For he was a part of the Roman army, and a centurion who was a commander ranked as one of our sergeant majors. He was in a position of great responsibility over at least 100 men, hence the name centurion. And it wasn't common for a centurion to even care about a servant. In fact, servants in those days were seen as nothing but tools to be used. They were dispensable and they were replaceable. But this centurion, he had a different heart. He had a different attitude and he had a different spirit for God and for God's people. In fact, he loved the Jews to the extent that he even built them a synagogue. And certain elders of the Jews warmed to him too. And this too was unusual. Because for in this time, the Romans were the oppressors of the Jewish nations. But you know something? Like another centurion in Acts 10 called Cornelius, God always has a man. God always has an exception to the rule. He always has a difference in the midst of the norm. He always has an upset in the midst of the status quo. And he always breaks the stereotype. Hallelujah. Yes, we don't know why he loved this servant. He might have had a deep friendship with him. He might have saw his work ethics and saw his talent and his obedience. But either way, this servant was special to him. But this servant was sick. In Matthew 8's account of this same story, we are told what that sickness is. And that sickness was called palsy. Now, palsy is a very debilitating illness. And it causes paralysis and was to the point of death. Others have to do everything for you and even have to carry you about, for you have no strength of your own. No man couldn't help this guy, or, anybody, or anything could solve his problem. It took divine intervention. It took Jesus. There are many things in our lives that are sick and ready to die. And some things should be left to die. Like our old nature, our old conversation, our old thoughts, our old motives, our old intentions, our old perspectives, and our old lives. Hallelujah. For some things are hold, are, we are holding on to so dear are causing spiritual paralysis. And it's stunning, uh, it's stunting our spiritual progress. The things we're holding on to is stunting spiritual growth. It's immobilizing our faith. There's no movement. It's st we're stuck in one place. We're in the same stage of our lives. Day to day, week to week, year to year, and in this sin-sick state, we depend on others to carry us. I'm reminded of a story in the Bible of a man laying by a pool in Beth Bethesda for 38 years. Every season, an angel would come and trouble the water 
And whoever stepped into the water first was healed of all manner of diseases. But Jesus asked this certain man an apparently obvious question. And that question was, wilt thou be made whole? In other words, do you really want this? Listen to the man. He said, I have no one to help me, to put me in. There's no one to carry me. Likewise, are we waiting for someone to carry us? We can't even read our Bibles. We just read a psalm from time to time. And we wait till Sunday and Wednesday for someone else to preach to us. For someone else to teach us from the pulpit, from Bible study, and even on YouTube. We can't even pray ourselves, praise God, because we're carried by the prayers of other people, praise God, in prayer meetings, even at the altar. We can't even be encouraged unless somebody else encourages us. But I hear David say, David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. You know, it's a great thing to be encouraged by others. But you know something? You're not always going to be there. You're not going to always be at the end of the phone. You're not going to always be in church that Sunday. So I've got to learn to praise God, to encourage myself in the Lord my God. Some can't even witness without having somebody to support them. Some can't even love unless somebody loves them first. That's spiritual palsy. That spiritual paralysis. So let me ask us the same question. Will thou be made whole? Do we really want this? Do you really want that deliverance this morning? Do you really want that healing this morning? Do you really want reconciliation this morning? Do you really want spiritual growth this morning? Do you really want that miracle that you've been waiting for, for years this morning. Do you really want the Holy Ghost this morning? Some want all their material um, needs met and they won't even look for a job. Some people want to lose weight and they don't even think about exercising or dieting. Some people want money in the bank but they're not prepared to save. Some people want salvation and they won't commit. It's like a farmer who's praying and longing and wanting a, 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 a big a, a crop in his fields, but he hasn't sown one seed. What does he expect? We have to do what it takes, saints of God. We have to take active steps towards it. Faith without works is to some, even Christians. This world and the things of this world are dear to them. But this world is sick and ready to die. Some are all about leisure and pleasure and fun and forget their purpose as converted Christians, and that is to serve God, win souls, and to love each other. Listen, don't get me wrong. We all need a break. We all need a pit stop in our lives from time to time, you know, to give us some rest. We all have to use the things in this world to help our, our material needs. But when those things become the be-all and the end-all, when those things become the center of our affection, it, it slowly sucks away at our spiritual life. And we eventually end up living in the flesh. There's a scripture in Revelation 3 that says, I know thy works, that you're neither hot nor cold, but you're lukewarm. And because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth because you've said in your hearts, hallelujah, I don't need anything. I've got all the goods. I've got the car. I've got, we've said that in our hearts. 
And it, the thing that always gets me, it said, and we don't know, we don't realize that we're actually dead. We're actually walking in dryness. We're sick. Hallelujah. Satan is using this world system to deceive the whole world, saints of God. Yes, John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Sounds contrary, but it's not. Because God loves the sin-sick sinner, which we were, and wants to save us from death. But he does not want to save, <laughs> hallelujah, the sin-sick system that will die. Second Peter 3 and 9 tells us, it is not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Ezekiel 33 and 11 says, As surely as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that they turn from their way. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. In verse 3, the centurion, with all of his power, all of his authority, he soon realized that he could do nothing to help his servants. He needed Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus, praise God, he screamed on top of my, his voice. Uh, he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And the more people was telling him to shut up, was the louder he shouted, hallelujah, because he knew he needed Jesus. Four friends had, a, a, had another friend who had the palsy paralyzed, and they were so desperate for Jesus that they, were, they went to on top of a roof and tore off a roof because they knew they needed Jesus. Hallelujah. The centurion realized he didn't need a counselor. He didn't need a lawyer. He didn't need a bank manager. He didn't need a doctor. He didn't need a nurse. He didn't need wise words or money. He knew that he needed Jesus. Hallelujah. Likewise, and I'm sure you can also testify, there were things that were dear to us, but sick and ready to die. We tried everything and, and, and we failed, praise God, because we tried to change them in our own strength. We thought that we could live this life on our own and in our own strength. But we soon realized that we need Jesus. We thought that the cars and the houses, the husband and the wife, the children, the job, the money, the nightclubs, and the holidays, hallelujah, and the gym was the answer. But no, <laughs> we need Jesus. We need him in the morning. We need him in the evening. We need him when the sun goes down. Hallelujah. We need him for better. We need him for worse. We need him. Hallelujah. We need him in sickness. And we need him in health. We need him for richer. We need him for poorer. Hallelujah. We need him until death and never part. Hallelujah. According to God's holy law. We need Jesus. The centurion knew he needed Jesus. Hallelujah. And verse 3 and 4, the Bible said that the centurion sent the elders of the Jews to beseech him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly. What a big lesson to us. They didn't beat around the bush. They, didn't, they came to the points, and they were specific. When we come to Jesus, don't beat around the bush. Come to the points. Be specific, because Jesus knows our needs. Another surprising thing about this text is that it was the elders of the Jews that caused Jesus to be crucified. And through tradition, they were prejudiced against all Gentiles. But here we find elders of the Jews seeking Jesus' help. 
on behalf of a Gentile Roman centurion. <laughs> huh? God is a good God. But in looking at this text, I can't help but feel that these elders didn't quite understand what Jesus is all about. Because they said that this centurion is worthy to be helped. Right? Because of what he has done for our nation, trying to convince Jesus. But Jesus knows our hearts. He doesn't need convincing saints of God. He doesn't need us to try to impress him. He doesn't need us to try to twist his arm with self-righteousness and the things that we have done. All Jesus wants is our faith and our trust in him. Hallelujah. Verse 6 and 7, Jesus still went with them. Hallelujah. He still went with them to the centurion's house. But you know something? The Bible says, or lets us know, that the centurion had the right approach and he had the right attitude towards Jesus Christ. You know, there's a scripture in Matthew 5 and 3, and he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see, the poor in spirit, they've acknowledged and they've been humbled by the grace of of God. They acknowledge, I acknowledge my sinfulness, Lord. I acknowledge my dependency on God through Jesus Christ alone. There is no saving resource in me. There is nothing that I can offer of any kind of value to God. But I stretch out my hands as a beggar asking for God's mercy and his grace. No matter what position I'm in, no matter what state I'm in, I ask God in mercy and grace. But we're no longer beggars. God has no longer made us beggars. But when we're in sin, we have to beg for God's mercy and forgiveness. When we approach Jesus in prayer, intercession, and supplication, all pride, all pride and arrogance must be cast away, knowing that we're talking to our Father, we're talking to our Lord, and we're talking to our King. Some approach Jesus Christ demanding this and demanding that. All right? With a do-it-now attitude. Who do we think we're talking to? Hallelujah. Who do we think we're talking to? God is to be reverenced. Hallelujah. And when we come before him, we should see ourselves as undone. We should see ourselves as nothing before him. We should see ourselves as a man of unclean lips. Hallelujah. Because of his holiness. Despite the centurion's authority, despite his position, he knew that Jesus was his greater authority. And he said, Lord, I am not worthy. He said, I'm not worthy for you to come underneath my roof. He said, I'm not worthy... I don't, I'm not even worth it to come out to you. Hallelujah to God. You know something? He, because he was involved with the Jews, he also realized that Jewish people held this belief, praise God, that they, it's unlawful for Jews to keep company with a Gentile. So he felt unclean. He felt unclean before Christ but he had humble faith and he knew his place and he bowed down before Jesus with, a, with, a, with his authority. Although he had authority, he bowed down to Jesus' authority. When we come close to God, 
when we come close to God, we start to see the horror of our own lives. We can sit here looking good with pride, money in the bank, houses and everything, feel that we have no need of a savior. But when we see the goodness of God and the holiness of God, and we reflect our lives with that, the elders of the Jews saw him as worthy, but he saw himself as unworthy. And so it is, man's, in man's sight, we might seem worthy and great, but in our sights, we need to see ourselves as unworthy. But this is the good news. In 2 Chronicles 7.14, God, he is moved by humble faith. Isn't that wonderful? He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, if they pray, if they seek my face, turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. Hallelujah. And I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Another scripture says, without faith it's impossible to please him. For those that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. But note this, faith must be based on something. Base, faith must be based on God's word. It needs to be based on truth. It needs to be based on testimony. It needs to be based on experience. It needs to be based on facts. The facts. Facts in God. You can have all the faith in the world. Jump off a building. <laughs> and expect you're going to be safe at the bottom of it. Let me tell you. That is based on nothing. That's tempting God and that's foolishness. There's a story that I must tell you about. There's three men in a boat. And two were mature Christians. The other one was a young Christian. The wind came along and blew off one of the elder gentlemen's hat in the sea on the left-hand side. The gentleman got out the boat, walked across, picked up his hat, and put it on his head. The young Christian said, this is unbelievable. These guys are really spiritual, you know? The wind came again, knocked off the, off the hat off another, the other gentleman, right into the sea. The guy got out of the boat, walked across, picked up the hat, put it on it. The young Christian said, what? He didn't even wait for the wind to come this time. He took off his hat, threw it in the sea, and he tried <laughs> to walk on the water, but he began to sink. And the older Christians grabbed him and pulled him up and said, boy, we should have told you that on this side we was actually walking on rocks. <laughs> huh? But the moral of the story is <laughs> that we have to have the rock of God's word as our base. <laughs> the centurion, he based his faith on the facts, on the facts that Jesus Christ healed the sick, that he raised the dead, that his word had authority. And with faith and in faith, he said, in a word, he said, say a word, and my servant shall be healed. Jesus was impressed by this Gentile centurion's humble faith on behalf of his servants, and he responded, isn't that encouraging? He was impressed by his humble faith, and he responded. Sometimes we think, Lord, where are you? You know, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? I've been praying about this for years. But you don't realize that the effectual fervent prayer of a fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. While you're praying, God is responding. And he said... I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. No, not among the people who should have known better. No, not upon the people who should have had faith. Praise God. 
And in a Matthew 8 account, he said, As thou hast believed, so be it done. Church of the living God, I just want to encourage you this morning. We're serving the same Jesus Christ who is still impressed and pleased by faith in him. So I'm going to ask us a question this morning. What is that thing that's dear to you but sick and ready to die? Is it your faith? Is it your commitments to God? Is it your relationship with God? Is it your devotional life? Is it your hope? Is it your purpose and your vision? In Revelations 3 and 2, Jesus spoke to the church in Sardis. And he said, be watchful and strengthen, strengthen the things which remain and are ready to die. You know, there's some, you know, a lot of us, we're on the brink. We're on the last flicker of our flame. Some of us are on the last nerve of our senses. Some of us are on the last sense of our mental capacity. Some of us are on the final ounce of our spiritual energy. Some of us feel like we're drowning. Some of us feel like we're spiritually dying. Some of us feel like we're spiritually losing our grip. I've been there. So I'm qualified to say, and I'm here to tell you, that it's when you get to your wit's end. It's when you get to the end of your rope. Praise God. And you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't know where to turn to. Trust in the Lord with all thine hearts. Lean not on thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he will direct thy paths. God will revive what's ready to die. Jesus will respond to your faith this morning when that's all you've got to hold on to. No matter your position, no matter your status, no matter your authority. Base your faith on God's undisputable, faithful, unshakable word for nothing. I heard somebody say that earlier. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is, let's say it together. Nothing is impossible with God. With a word, he made dry bones to live. With a word, he raised up Lazarus from the dead. With a word, he cast out devils. With a word, hallelujah, he made a sea to be calm. With a word, he created things and they came forth and they were created. He's the same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. And he is ready to revive those things that are sick, that are dead to you, sick and ready to die in your life right now. In faith, just say like the centurion, Lord, say a word and my situation will be healed. Lord, say a word and my marriage will be healed. Lord, say a word, and my lost and unruly children will be healed. Lord, say a word, and my body will be healed. Lord, say a word, and my mind shall be healed. Lord, say a word, and my faith shall be healed. Even on behalf of your unsaved member of family, even on behalf of your work colleague, even on behalf of your unsaved partner, even on behalf of your brother or your sister that might be drifting away, who's spiritually paralyzed by the cares of this life. Lord, say a word and rest assured as thou hast believed, so be it done. God bless you this morning. You know something, there's a song that says, I need thee, oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, we sung that one already, we sung that one already, the one that was laid on my heart, and I want us to sing it, is that, 
we, we, we need a word from you. We need a word from, that's the one. We need a word from you. If we don't, what will we do? Wanting you more each day. Wanting you more each day to show us your perfect way. There is no other way that we can live. Can we stand in this time and sing this one more time? sing this song the altar is open at this time and I want to encourage you if there's somebody who has heard from God this morning if you felt that God was speaking to you this morning please come forth for prayer and there's people here this morning that's capable people that will pray with you you know, sometimes we go through problems, situations in our lives and we don't realize how sick a problem it is. And it seems like it's at the point of death. But Jesus Christ is right here, ready to revive your situation. It could be in your job. It could be at college. It could be at university. It could be in your home. Please come forward this morning as we sing in Jesus' name. We need a word. Don't go home with your blessing without your blessing. somebody's heart please feel free to come forward and God wants to bless you wants to touch you wants to deliver you to help you to cope with this week that's coming in front of us he wants to prepare each and every one of our hearts he wants to keep us strengthen us but he wants us to take that step of faith in Jesus name we're going to sing it one more time
Jesus, Elder Earl, don't go too far. We give thanks to God for his word, for that reassurance, for the comfort that we know that, come what may, we can go to Jesus. The one thing that also struck me in that passage was the elders thought that the centurion was worthy of Jesus' time. The centurion said, no, I'm not. I'm not even worthy for you to come under my roof. But because Jesus is Jesus, it's not about what we think about ourselves. It's not about what other people think about us. But it always comes back to what he has to say to us and about us. We thank God for his word. We thank God for the reality of who he is. I'm going to ask Elder Earl to come and give our closing prayer in Jesus' name. said and done today. Thank you, Lord God, for the vessel that you used. But I'm asking you, Father, today, that the words that have gone forward, let it fall on good soil in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm asking you, Father, about to go, Lord God, go with us. Take us through this week, Lord God. Cover us with your mighty hand. Keep us safe. And as we pray, Lord God, Jesus, go forward in your name. Step out in righteousness. Cover us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God one more time I just want to thank him for the privilege to be in his house truly our God has been good as we prepare to go home why are we sitting but we honor God we praise him we love and adore him I'm just grateful that each of us was here to be able to be here let's continue to pray for our pastor in his absence to his family to mother Simmons just to all the mothers of the house we just acknowledge God. We need to hear from him, brethren. We need that personal relationship with him. So as we go, we trust in him. As we go, we rely upon him. I want to give God thanks for our musicians, for the singers, for the tech, for our hospitality that's coming. We honor our God and King. I'm going to... Oh, Becky's gone. Right, so we're going to stand and we're going to repeat our benediction which is from the book of Jude. I always get it wrong, but it's Praise God. You know, sometimes we say, and I'm just, it's just been on my heart and on my mind that our pastor repeats this over us at the end of every service, but just to take the time to know what the word says for ourselves and to understand for ourselves got no on the desk but the, uh, the, the benediction that he gives comes from the book of Jude and for verses 24 and 25 so I'm going to encourage each of us when we go home just to look at the word of God and to understand what it says for us but as we go let's understand now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to be present in Sorry, we're going to do that again. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless.